Welcome back to a brand new Civ 6 or Civilization 6 deity video. Today we're going to be playing the new Civ, the Congo, and unlike the regular Banza Congo, Mrs. Zynga Mbande can actually found a religion. Why, yes, I am butchering the names like I was working at a meat shop. But in all honesty, her leader ability is really good. 10% yields upon the same continent as your capital, negative 15% upon another. I'd normally call her the wish.com version of Lady Thick Thighs, but considering the fact Lady Thick Thighs is only about six tiles out, the Congo right now is the Gucci in that relationship. And Kesey's a really good ability, as is her unique unit and the Banza. And her character model's pretty nice, although it does look like she's staring directly into my search history with that, so we are going to close it for a bit. But uh, yeah, pretty decent start so far. We get the 223 gems, the 22 start tile. I'm going to be stewing something unheard of right now. I'm going to be moving away from the 22 tile just so I can work the gems immediately. If the river floods in the next turn, that is going to be unfortunate. Let's go found our first city, the city of Kabasa. Absolutely incredible. And looking at the continent lens right now, Labradoria, as per normal knowledge, common knowledge, of course, that is the birthplace of all African empires. Uh, there's a tribal village. We are working that tile immediately. And I am a little bit rusty. I haven't played in a few weeks, so if I do make some mistakes, it's probably why. Although, of course, if I do something like build a scout, or God forbid, two of them, then I'm unsubscribed from the channel right now. I've been kidnapped and I'm currently getting tortured. In any case, I am going to go bronze working first, just in case we have our unique unit that we can use. And uh, there's military tradition, an absolutely useless first policy slot. Let's hit next turn. Met the first city set of Hansa, and someone's already met them and put an envoy in them, meaning we gotta prepare our fingers, excuse me, for the potential goatsy we're gonna be giving out soon. There's the first civilization, Mansa Musa. I'm assuming he's the one who did make the fatal mistake of deciding to settle near us. No, it probably was Jay of Armin, actually, and I immediately get denounced by Mansa Musa. I absolutely love to see it. Nothing like getting called the N-word by a black guy the first second you meet them. With that denunciation, we are probably gonna have to keep our units asked close together as is possible is there any envoy i can get from hong kong mysticism that's not just start with magnus then but yeah he's probably going to declare war on me in the near future Mali cities are from the east, so we really only need a few iron tiles for the most part just to make uh, Stalin look like an outstanding champion of human rights, which hopefully we'll be able to do fairly soon for the most part. I still don't know where J.F. Varman is, which, okay, he's up north, actually. So we really don't have to worry too much about uh, people coming out of nowhere and attacking us. We can proceed with Operation Hands in Between the Butthole. Oh, does that look like the Galapagos Islands? I think it is. Now, it does seem like cheating by actually playing with the Galapagos Islands as we spit roast the spearmen, but uh, I really do want to see how much I can, it's in Labradoria, so we can see how many yields we can actually potentially get with our unique ability. There's Catherine Dimidome, we're going to take her hospitality, she's all the way on the opposite side, we can use her to spit roast Mansa Musa, no doubt about it. Oh, uh, well, they have a Quadrium, which is quite unfortunate, in fact. We're probably gonna have to back out and heal a little bit. Curly Empire, just to get a bonus towards settler production. There's Galapagos, there's uh, experience from that tribal village. That's absolutely fantastic. Gonna do jack all for us all game. All right, it seems like the Quadrium is gone for the most part. We can go ahead and take out the encampment now. This guy's a promotion now, so I think I'm gonna take him out with take the encampment out with this guy so I can have three decently promoted future swordsmen. Settler-wise, the Petra here is looking absolutely submissive and breedable, undoubtedly. We'll also get the really strong Galapagos by settling this tile over there. And then from there, we could do one, two, three, settle a nice canal city right over there with the gems. We'll be able to do the same here, although it might not be the best idea with the northern desert tiles. And then, of course, over here, we're going to get this city up there. Move, Start moving our way down down we are going to eventually take hansa fairly quickly and then from there we can go after hong kong as well before going after mansa musa and uh after that i think uh, uh hansa's kind of making us struggle a little bit with this what we might do is we might get this city up there and then we could get a third fourth fifth uh, 50th city over there whatever number we're at right now and uh pretty good city spot we'll also get cardiff because it's another extremely strong city and then finally we can, it's not the best city, but getting a city over there is, I guess, helpful in the late game if we don't have any other places to put it. I'm going to skip my turn once just to see if we can get any iron to spawn. 
uh, next turn when bronze working gets researched. There it is, looking at the potential iron spawns. There is one up over there, so what I think is probably gonna happen, hmm, I'll probably get that city up there, actually, and just completely remove that city. Remove that city for now. I mean, eventually, we can, we might be able to get it over there, but again, it's not a very good one. I just need to get that iron immediately. Because of that, we will immediately be line iron working. Disperse this guy to get the Sanguine Pact and a free promotion. And then we'll start making our way down. You will move over there. And then I think what we'll also do is we will we'll build another warrior. We're making so much money right now. Just up the butthole. We're Jeff Bezos in this bitch. And uh, eventually, we will actually be able to just upgrade four or five of these guys and immediately blitz someone like the uh, Malians, showing them who the superior African schlong swinger is. Quickly gonna drive by this scout just to show him who... Fuck, I just completely lost my train of thought right there, but we are gonna take out that scout. Alright, Catherine de' Medici, see? We do get a free Pantheon, which is absolutely fantastic. I think the best thing to do... I'm really not too sure. All the good stuff is taken right now. Uh, River Goddess? No. Lady of the Reeds and Marshes? Camps? I really don't know. I think I'm just going to go... God of War is not going to be helpful at all. We even lost God of the Forge. Goodness. I might as well just go eeny, meeny, miny, mo when picking this shit. Um, City Patron Goddess seems to be the best one. I mean, they're all dog shit for the most part. Could be used as toilet paper next pandemic. But aside from that, really not looking too good. It was the classical era. We're still in a normal age, which is pretty fine for the most part. I will, of course, go for colonization. Do that. Dedication-wise, everyone's in a normal age, so we're not going to be dealing with negative 500 loyalty, which is fantastic. Then, of course, we will go provision just to help us when building settlers in our capital. We're going to go masonry before ironworking because we are going to need a lot more money to upgrade our units, as well as a lot more... Okay, well, I don't know what the fuck this guy is doing. Might as well go completely Valhalla trying to take this encampment. And they have a man-at-arms at turn 44. Hmm... Seems like the Barbarians have uh, been a little technologically uh, stagnant in this game, it seems. Turn 44 for a man-at-arms, it's about 30 turns too late. Of course, we get another Barbarian encampment towards the south. Who doesn't love dealing with Barbarians in the early game? Jaguar Warriors. Well, that absolutely tickles my pickle sensationally, no doubt about it. I uh, really can't do much at this instance. We're just going to have to try our very best not to keep dying. There's iron working, which is good. I don't know where that scout is coming from, though, which is a little unfortunate. Wipe you out with you. Start moving our units down south. Cardiff looks like it's about to split my butthole into two. Uh, I'll auto-delete the pins, and you'll just go for a monument for right now. And then for now, I think we just go animal husbandry into uh, archery. Fairly certain the barb camp is somewhere down south. We can pillage the encampment, which is really good for our money. All right, that's a bug right there I just witnessed, unless the Jaguar Warrior came out of fucking God knows where. We'll get the Sanguine Pact, of course, just for another unit, and then we'll begin upgrading our unique unit. Perfect. And uh, we can actually, probably after this Settler, we will get a... We'll get the Battering Ram first, actually, and then we can make our way towards Hunza. Nope, it seems like the Barb Camp is towards the south. That is rightful territory for the Congo. So we're just going to go ahead and hit them with the Christopher Columbus special, completely wiping them out. And uh, we'll take that city spot for ours eventually. This right here is actually a pretty solid city for the most. Even with all that tut desert, we do get some really good tiles over there. Huge victory. We'll be able to raid the encampment for a little bit more money. And then in two turns, we can go after Hanzo, which is an extremely strong city. There's the Battering Ram, and there are the Hunzian Swordsmen for some fucking reason. They don't even have iron. I don't know where they got the Swordsmen from. Are you just using, like, paper leaves and bamboo as your swords here? How the fuck do you have swords without iron? It doesn't even make sense. We'll also pillage with this guy just so he can get the experience. There's the big PP giving us oligarchy, which will allow us to save up on some money. And then we can also go urban planning for a little bit extra production. We'll start the war next turn, probably. Also, I think for loyalty purposes, this next settler should probably move down there. I'm not too worried about the north or the west for that matter. And just putting a city right there doesn't really prevent us from doing anything. And it does help out our loyalty conquests eventually. Alright, it seems like there's another barbarian encampment to the west for some fucking reason. That's going to be a little unfortunate. Probably keep this guy as a special sort of defender. We'll also have to upgrade these two. And uh, yeah, okay, well I was going to say let's begin the war against Hansa, but apparently they've just got... I, I, I don't even know, they've got something defending there. They've got the Loch Ness Monster in there to defend their territory. Gonna have to wait till we get a few more of our units. 
I absolutely love Roman legions in the morning, don't you? Uh, we're probably gonna have to actually end up trying to buy some for the most part. I won't trade any to, of course, uh, Mansa Musa. Here, we'll just go get the Gao and Bimba, and then we can get another one in the next couple of turns. And then hopefully these guys will be more than enough to defend against the Barbarian Invasion. Although, I, I, I would not bet any money on it. Well, let's just start the war. We do have a 10 combat strength with defense against ranged attacks with our unique units. I'm really not too worried about that. Uh, we can begin some attacks over there. Can put you up there, and then you can uh, stay fortified because I feel like that swordsman's going to try to do something stupid. All right, nobody else likes me, unfortunately. Now, I did not mean to kill the unit with this warrior, which kind of sucks a little bit. You are going to stay fortified and uh, promote when he does enough damage to you. You're going to finish him off. You're going to move in through there. You move up there, and then with the Battering Ram, we should be able to do some damage, including with the Archer. Ooh, this is a little dangerous. I think we settle this city immediately. Oh uh, yeah, it's not the best city, but again, helps with loyalty. That's really what matters, because Hunt is an extremely strong city as they continuously try to kill themselves. I love the AI in this game. We'll begin wiping him out with the Vampire for the extra combat strength. And again, I think we just take this as slowly as we can around the city and then we begin the fisting process and getting hong kong as an ally against the congo first is a really really good idea too the fall of rome seems like it has been mitigated somewhat as well which is fine i'll upgrade you keep you fortified and you still have the promotion so we can send in reinforcements extremely extremely quickly major flood somebody die that's unfortunate uh you can do that We'll go, we'll promote this guy, and uh, we'll keep these two here just in case more barbarians inevitably come our way. We'll wipe you out with a vampire here just to get some extra combat strength. I want to immediately go against the uh, Congo, so I will actually take some risks and, uh, or actually start pillaging everything I can. Let's finish this city off. Let's see who is closest to a promotion. You don't have one. Uh, you can, so we'll just do volley with you. Uh, you are going to fortify a little bit, and then you can attack there. You know what I might do? He gets a promotion if he attacks again, and we can pillage this to completely heal up our vampire. So we'll keep these guys fortified and wait one more turn. Here we go. We pillage. We attack and get the promotion with you. Oh, apparently you don't kill him, though. Uh, well, that's a little bit anticlimactic. Let's attack with you for a free promotion, and then we'll just finish you off with... There we are. There's the city-state of Hansa, which is good for us. I do also have the strongest military, so there probably isn't going to be an emergency against me. Of course, I could be wrong. There definitely is going to be one when I decide to attack the uh, uh, Malians, although taking out their iron mine early on, I think, is going to be important. Everyone's in a normal age, so I'm not really too worried about Molly, although we are probably going to have to do enough damage, I guess, so that if they do get a Golden Age, they're not just going to immediately fist us. I hope everyone has a change of panties, because that plus seven industrial zone's going to leave you feeling a little wet on the undergarments. We'll send an envoy to Cardiff for even more money, and then production-wise here, I think we immediately just go for the government plaza first. And here we are. We're about to completely wipe out Molly soon. I will declare war. Don't really, doesn't really matter, I guess, what the grievance is. First things first, I want to pillage this, which you can, uh, I was going to say you can do, but apparently you can. Start moving these units up. Uh, we'll unlink first, move this guy, and then this guy can move, and then this guy can move, and then we're going to need the battering ram before we can do any damage. It's a mountain pass. going to be a little difficult to take, although, again, not really, too oh, wait, they don't even, uh, don't really even need the battering ram now that I think about it. Let's just go ahead and just begin to uh, spread those cheeks. I am also at war with Hong Kong, but not anymore. They just lost 90% of their military. With these units sealed. We're going to make our way and deal with the encampment that's just been making babies, I guess, this entire time. Not really much else you can do in 1000 BC, but uh, it is definitely causing us a pain with all the warriors they have. So go delete them immediately soon-ish. We will also, I think, take Amani and send her to Hong Kong. I think sending Amani to Hong Kong right now just for some exploration would be... And then three attacks, and that's all she wrote for Kumbai Sala. Molly's doing the absolute genius maneuver of building the Hanging Gardens for me. I thank you, no doubt about it. And the Ani's looking extremely weak right now. We gotta go before they start building those walls. Uh, we'll start moving everyone who is at least somewhat healthy. We have about five turns till the city rebels. Uh, we can just remedy that by moving in uh, Magnus, for example. Do also have skirmishers coming out of the woodwork, which is a little unfortunate. Nothing we can't handle, though. There's our next city of Umbanzo Congo. My god, this is a crossover episode. Absolutely beautiful. We have about seven cities by turn 79. 
We're we'll hopefully also have Niani extremely soon, which is fantastic. Uh, I think right now, I think we move there for now, and then we promote to Tortoise, which is fan, which is good. We'll attack with you, move in and attack with the Vampire, and then I think we will also, I won't attack with you. They're not building walls, we don't see the animation, so we should be fine for the most part. Problem is, if they get a Golden Age in two turns, and they just immediately take Kumbai Salabat, that might be a little bit of an issue. Oh, what's this now? I just immediately get invited to an orgy, toll free it seems. Uh, we, oh, okay, that's a lot of damage, in fact, but I think we, no, they have man-at-arms now, that's, that's absolutely fantastic, I love this game. City surrounded, it's just a matter of time now. Yeah, absolutely love to see it, that was just an orgy of epic proportions, my buttholes never felt looser. Uh, let's back out, and as much as I'd love to build the Ancestral Hall right now, I think we gotta start chopping out some Congo, or Molly's in a normal age, excuse me, so that should be fine for the most part uh, we will now go for a French education and then let's uh finish off this city right here who's got promotions who's got you got a promotion yes you do there we are there's the capital city uh again really shouldn't be too hard for us to keep this yeah seven that's very much okay and then you move in this guy it's now eight and uh, let's continue making our way through to Walata forever City of Jen is eventually going to rebel, I'd assume towards France, because they are in a golden age, so we will have to deal with that as the time comes. Let's go plunder the trade route. They also have Etam and Nanki, my goodness. I'd make another sexual joke, but I feel like I've made a little too many of those for right now. Uh, so I'm just going to say that is a very nice thing that happened to us. Special session, they are all going to come after me. Uh, they don't like to see black women. Well, apparently they do like to see black women succeeding. Except for Mansa Musa, of course, so do be your own people. Let's go surround the city. Uh, you stay fortified a little bit as... Actually, we could get that major victory. I want to attack before they can foment a sizable resistance. And uh, you will move there, plunder even more money, and then we'll start moving in the reinforcements. Not the best campus, but even plus one is fine for the most part. Uh, we will, of course, start sending our units into defensive position for the most part, at the very least, until I have enough units to actually go and take care of the Barbarian Uprising, shall we call it. Then here, I need to buy a builder, man. This is not look... Actually, yeah, build. The extremely strong city of Walata is about to be ours the next turn. Might as well attack with you. And then uh, we'll begin surrounding this city for the most part. It's not going to survive much longer either. It seems like the French have joined in on this crusade. That's fantastic. They don't have any units nearby so, we'll, nearby, so we'll do some damage. If they attack with the catapult, we just take it immediately. There is the next city gone. And again, we can go for another city up north. I really don't see why not. Let's go ahead and do some final bit of damage to the city of Jin. If I lose the vampire, that might not be the worst thing in the world, though, because he just goes back to my cat. Where I'd probably need him for the future defense. There's Hammurabi, unfortunately. There goes any fun I decided to have this game. He's already at 65 science per turn, despite the debuff he has, meaning in a few hundred turns, he's going to just completely eliminate us, it seems. Yeah, with a vampire back home now, I can actually move him there, keep him fortified. We'll start chopping stuff in this city. We are going to need some housing. Uh, we'll get the aqueduct soon enough. I think just getting a granary might not be that bad in this situation, actually. And then we'll go for Pingala and put him in the capital city. There is the city of Jen taken. That is beautiful. And again, my military strength is going to be higher than uh, Catherine's after, of course, uh, we all heal, which means she probably won't come after us, which is great. I don't know about going for the other civs. I feel like my uh, denunciation protocols or whatever are a little bit uh, too uh, much grievances, excuse me, for that. They are going after Cardiff, though, which is fine by me, I guess. Problem is, we are probably going to lose the city of Jen, which is a little unfortunate. Uh, we could hopefully help it a little bit, I think, and then maybe even do a policy or whatever. We just need it to grow a little bit for the most part, and to do that, we need positive. So I think going for the uh, plus two for every governor should help, and when we repair the monument, the city of Gao should also be extremely easy to take for the most part. Bad news is, though, the city is in East Africa, as is most of Malian City, so we do get the 10% debuff, unfortunately. Uh, but it's just free cities at that point. There's really no reason not to go for it. And then this skirmisher has pretty much entered Hell Week right now, completely eliminated in, like, two shots. We'll chop out the rest of this settler, of course, as well. There's recorded history. We are also going to go for the Praetorium I was talking about, and that's pretty much going to be it for now. I think next things first, we have, next things next, excuse me, we're going to have to go exploration immediately. 
Settler Wise will also go for the Galapagos City next and link with these two just in case. And finally, the city of Gao isn't ours, not this turn at least, unfortunately. Uh, this city has about eight turns remaining, maybe if I, hmm, I think if we get some sort of amenities that would make things a little better actually, but no one wants to trade with the Warmongers, unfortunately. I think what we'll do is we'll buy a builder and then chop out the monument that hopefully should be enough at least to save the loyalty. And let's finally take out the city of Gao. There's Mansa Musa, completely removed from the game, fortunately. And uh, with that, I'm assuming our loyalty is also going to be in the positives. Hey, look at that. We are in the positives. Just like that, we have about 11 cities by turn 94, which is absolutely fantastic right now. We'll start getting some campuses out. We'll get the rest of our settlers out, of course. And uh, after that, and with the Galapagos, we should easily be in running position to win this game. There's also our first great person, a great merchant, in fact, as we'll also go for Connoisseur with Pingala. Move you over there, and I think what I'll do here is I'll upgrade one of these guys to a man at arms when I can, of course. But we even get Rising Hunger, so it's two vampires that pretty much equate to a man at arms. More denunciations. I'll eventually forget that the Congo even ever existed, which is okay. We gotta get an archer in that city, man. We'll send out our second expedition towards the Barbs in the West. Let's hope it doesn't turn out the, like the last one, which is a re which was a reenactment of the virus. Give me back my legions type shit. Let's upgrade this guy to the Man at Arms, meaning this guy is as strong and even stronger than the Man at Arms. And over here, we'll move, use the Settler, settle Galapagos, get some error score from that, and then just like that, we're probably in the driver's seat for the rest of the game. That's taken a while, but we've finally broken through the Barbarians. Goodness, that took way longer than I thought. We'll get another Great Merchant, which is fine. Start repairing everything. We're just pretty much working on the economy right now as we get Cardiff as our suzerain. And then, oh my god, even more barbs to the say. Absolutely love to see this. I am just having fun. You can feel it in my voice. You could probably see it in my penis from the screen you're on right now. It's just fantastic. I'd love to make a beeline for the encampment, aside from the fact they now have musketmen somehow. There is- there, muskets aren't even a thing yet, I'm not exactly sure what sort of science doohickey construction they've got going on, but damn sure ain't anything that's fair or balanced. Honestly, it's about to become a city-state anyway, I might as well just make allies with it. Wow, another world session 500 years after it happened, and of course Captain is going to be the one to say yes. That is unfortunate for the most part, but nothing I wasn't expecting. We'll start moving in these forces from the south to defend the city of Jin. I think we'll finish off the trader in that city. We really won't need walls for the most part. There's also a Mahanja Daro settler over there. I'd love to be a fly on the wall of whatever the fuck happened for them to get that settler. Actually, I might be there starting. Well, no, it's not. It's up there. Finally got the archer here, and we can deal with that quadrine now. And we're, of course, also dealing with the city of Fez, fortunately. I was thinking this game was a little bit too much fun. It's a good thing they've stopped it right in its tracks. Yeah, Jen's pretty much gone as a city. Really not much I can do about that. I'd rather keep that city than have a lot of burn to the ground, so I'll just... And the Barbs decide to burn down my Governor Plaza for some reason. Let's completely eliminate him. And then we'll queue up a repair to the Ancestral Hall after that Settler. And we even get another Great Merchant. Hey, I'll take all the Great Merchants we ha you have, honestly. Uh, we'll get a farm up here. Cardiff is not holding strong, actually. But that city's literally going to be mine with my Golden Age coming in soon. So I don't, won't do anything to stop it for the most part. Alright, they have decided to send in a lone ballista to try to storm the walls of Walata, which, uh, bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see how that pays off for them. Yeah, Francis is in the Dark Age. We're just gonna get shafted the second they try to, uh, uh, take that city, I suppose. We also are able to now faith and really gold by settlers for pretty cheap. And there's the city-state of Singapore with exploration coming in with the Merchant Republic. And now with that, we can get natural philosophy. We'll also get... Ooh, trade to the Merchant Confederation, and then we will also go for Colonial Offices, because most of our cities are on another continent. Kind of ironic, considering I wanted mostly a one-continent game as the Congo, but I will take what I can get. We'll also have one of the best great scientists in the entire game, and I hope you guys understand, can see right now why I would 
personally say the game is pretty much over. I mean, the number one science save is Babylon, of course, but it's also France is up there, and we are just right on France's butthole when it comes to science overall, and we haven't even built our stuff, like, uh, the stuff we need everywhere, like campuses and stuff like that. So after we get that, it would be, it's even all the other cities, we still haven't settled for the most part, which is a lot. We'll start putting this guy in. They've decided to burn down the city of Cardiff because they'd rather the people suffer than actually give the city to me, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't know what the hell France is trying to do here. Not exactly the most uh, best strategy, I'd personally say. Let's go ahead and build. Uh, we should actually probably just start getting a builder in this city first. Here we are, production-wise here. We'll repair the commercial hub. And uh, you can just finish him off, I guess. There goes France's military. Uh, we could go after France. I really don't see a point to for the most part. We can still get the Petra, surprisingly. We'll do that immediately and chop most of it out. Uh, we do have more than enough cities. We have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We're about to get our 14th city extremely soon as well. And we'll get the Mbanza soon as well, which is fantastic. We also have Galapagos coming in hot. Get that nice corporation in there, and our capital's just looking absolutely submissive and breedable. Yeah, I'd pretty much call this run over right now. We have about 15 cities. We still have spots for a lot more. Mid to late game, I would probably go after Hong Kong, Candy, and just wipe out the Congo. And then from, or the J J J of Armin, excuse me. I'm just killing ourselves probably isn't the most sensible option. France's military is completely wrecked. It's pretty much 1941 levels. And with the, even though JF Armin's higher in tech, we could probably easily just storm them with all this flat terrain. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much uh, going to be it for today's video. The Congo are extremely strong. The fact that they can now found a religion is also really good. But just overall, their abilities were pretty good from the start. And then just getting the queen of the, ne not even going to try to pronounce those, makes her a lot stronger, especially if, you know, the uh, La Labradoria continent was actually extended all the way to like here, for example. That would make my game a lot more fun. But if you do enjoy, as always, leave a like and subscribe to not miss out on future content. I'll see you all next time. Peace.